everybody. Thanks for watching Game Trade Media at Alliance Open House. I'm Gretchen, and I'm here with Chris from Calliope Games. Hello. So what did I bring here? I brought Zero <laughs> Phoenix Rising. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the newest game in the Suro line of games. So Calliope Games has been around for 10 years, mm -hmm. and Suro has been our flagship game for all 10 of those years. Suro of the Seas came out in 2012, and now, in 2019, we are bringing out Suro Phoenix Rising. So a lot of people describe Suro as their favorite gateway game, mm -hmm. um, and so they love the series. They've grown up with the series in gaming. Um, this one actually takes a lot of what you know about Suro, and it flips it, and it rotates it. Hmm. <laughs> I'll make that make more sense okay. later. Um, <laughs> what you're going to be doing in this game is, the story is, an angry god has stolen the stars out of the night sky. Well, that's mean. I know. I don't yeah, hate rude. when they do that. Yeah. So what happens is the people of the world go out and they light these paper lanterns and they send them into the sky at mm -hmm. night just to kind of give themselves a little light and hope. And so these playful phoenixes see these little lights and they dart towards them. They race each other. And when they reach one of these lanterns and touch it, it, it becomes a new star and it flies ah. up into the sky. So as a phoenix, you are racing through the board and you are trying to reach these lanterns and move through and off the tile with one of these to transform it into a star. And the, the mission of this game is to get seven stars, which uh, builds a whole new constellation. You see, oh. so yeah, it's a little bit of set collection, mm -hmm. and there's a puzzle element that I'll go over in just a second, which is completely new to <laughs> Suro. But if you know Suro and you know all about you know following the path and everything, it's it keeps a lot of the foundations of what makes Suro, and then it builds on that. So it's kind of really cool and new, and it's something really different from what we've done in Suro before. Awesome. Yeah, so as you can see, beautiful components. We have these little glowy lanterns, and we've got these beautiful uh, phoenixes, and we've got these life tokens that we'll talk about in a moment, and stars. So what you'll do is, with your phoenix, when you start on the edge of the board, you actually start with these 16 tiles pre-populated, mm -hmm. and that'll tell you where to put the physical lanterns on the board, and you'll start with a hand of a couple of tiles. Now notice that the tiles are actually double-sided. So if you know Suro... You're used to sides that look like this, where the lines go off the flat edges of the tiles. Mm -hmm. But this one, the other side, actually goes off the oh. diagonal. So you think about it as a bird, you're freewheeling around and you're doing different things. So you have different ways that you can fly. So when you start here, you can choose either side of either of your two tiles. And let's say I put this one in right here and I discard the other. Now I can choose any of the spots, the paths that come in on my flat edge, including the diagonal, to come on. So if this guy comes on here, he flies up through here, he goes on to the diagonal of this one, he flies around here. Now he's going to leave this one, and this one he's going to grab, so he'll actually put a star down right there. Oops. And then he's going to continue on, flying this way, until he hits that dead end right there. So he stops. He's now floating. Mm -hmm. He's hovering in the air. This is what he does like this. <laughs> Just like that? Just like that. And now with this spot right here, we will take this lantern and the star that he's created. This lantern has now become a star. And now you move this lantern to any other spot with a blue lantern that doesn't have a star or your own phoenix oh. on it. So maybe I decide to put it over this way because this is the direction in which I'm flying. Mm -hmm. And then I collect this star that I created and I put it in front of myself. I now have one of the seven... I need to win. So now on my next turn, and I don't grab any new tiles because I'm not actually going to be populating the board with a new tile. Instead, on my next turn, I'm moving into that spot with the orange lantern. So what I'll do is I'll actually move this off here, and then I will flip or rotate, or both, the one in front of me. And that's why we have this cool tray, because this allows you to very easily manipulate without messing up any of the <laughs> tiles around you. You can flip, rotate, nothing gets messed up. And you can put that down any which way you want. And then on the next turn, you will follow the new path that you created like that. Now, when you end your movement like this on top of a tile but not moving past it, you won't pick that up just yet because some conniving player could come behind you and swoop through that spot <laughs> and grab that away from you before you leave. Ah. So it's not until you leave that tile that you get to collect that, that lantern right there or you get to move that lantern and score the star that it creates. <laughs> So this is how the movement works. So you place, if there's nothing in front of you and you're moving into a blank, you're going to place a new tile. If you're moving through the center of the board, however, you're going to flip and rotate the tiles that are here. And it's kind of fun because, you know, you don't have to mess up anything around it as you, as you manipulate the, the tiles. So awesome. Kind of now, 
when you play original Searle, <laughs> this is my face as I play Searle and the board fills up. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason for that is uh-huh. because if you leave the board in Searle, mm-hmm. you're out of the game. Oh, no. You're like, ah, oh, I can't believe it. I, I'm out. But in this game, you are a phoenix. So if you were to take a path that sends you off the board, put your little pawn in front of you, and on your next turn, you will spend your life token, which is like ashes. You will you rise spend back it, up. You rise back up, and you can come oh. back in any blank space around the edge of the board. So if you find yourself later in the game, maybe all the lanterns have been moved to you know this side of the board, and you're way over you know, here, you may choose to put a tile down that sends you off so that you can come back on an area of the board that has a lot more lanterns. It's actually strategically a really smart move to send yourself off and use your life token to come back to a populated area. So that's much different from Suro, <laughs> and people have to but unlearn what they knew. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really, really cool. So, <laughs> so what you'll see is the first time people who know Suro play this, they're worried, just like in regular Suro. I don't want to go off. I don't want to go off. <laughs> but when they realize the trick, which is find that right moment to send yourself off, then suddenly they're scoring two or three lanterns in one turn, and the, the game just opens up. Now, once you spend that life token, though, mm-hmm. you don't have a safety net. You, you are now, if you go off the board, you are eliminated. <laughs> so you only get to do it once because, come on, I mean, you know, you, you immolate and then you come oh, back. Yeah. That takes a lot out of you. And there's quite a lot of phoenixes here. So quite a yeah. few people can play. Absolutely. Just like with any of the Suro games, this plays from two to eight players. <laughs> so if you're playing with a lot of people. So much zipping and stealing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You get into that <laughs> roller coaster and you're going around and you're moving people around. It's, it's, a, it's a really, really fun game. So um, and we have the first player marker that you see here is actually the dragon that's in the cutout of that is actually the pawn from the original Suro. So it's all about kind of the legacy of Suro and remembering all of the wonderful stuff. Yeah, we connected it all up. In fact, the original Suro, when you play, the board actually has a phoenix. Not many people notice. Everyone thinks about the dragon mm-hmm. stones that you play, but the board itself actually has a phoenix. So that's it so was cool. All, yeah, it was all it setting this in. game up. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so th- this is um, Surreal Phoenix Rising. Again, two to eight players, um, and, it, and it's fast, actually. I mean, there are some times where, you know, there's a really tough move, and so you're, you're like, okay, what am I going to do here? But for the most part, it's like the original Surreal, maybe just a little bit longer in some of the thinking, some of the puzzling, but the game actually goes fast even with eight players. That's awesome. And you said the win condition is you have to get how many stars? Seven. Seven stars. Seven stars, stars or be the last Phoenix on the board because if— <laughs> Last Phoenix standing. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> because in an eight-player game, if all of these edges fill up, and there's no place for you to come back on because you have to have an empty spot. Mm-hmm. If people go off the board, they are out. So it, it does become possible with eight players, if everyone's really loading the board up with tiles, it is possible to be the last one on the board and you can win that way too. That's but my usually, strategy. yeah, <laughs> knock them all out. Yeah, the killer phoenixes. I, I see. I see how that is. Yeah, so this is Cyril Phoenix Rising. And I will say too, in the rules, there's a variant called the Winds of Change. So if you like to really mess with others, <laughs> In that version of the game, when you collect a lantern, so if I take this off of here, I will actually flip this down so that it's the dimmed side. So think of these lanterns as on or off. So on this side, the lantern is on. So when I take a lantern from there, I turn it to its off side. And then when I move this to a different place, if I move it to one that's off, I'll actually flip that to the on side before I put it down. Now, let's say another phoenix had been here when i did that, that messes their that strategy exactly up. they might move to here now I, I put that there but if they're on the edge of the board i might <laughs> oh be able no. to send them off that <laughs> oh no so winds of change can be a little bit meaner <laughs> and there's a little bit more thinking involved but for people who've been playing the game quite a bit and they want a little bit more of a challenge mm-hmm. and something that can mess up other sides of the board that can be one way to do it Oh, man. So is there anywhere uh, people can go to find out more information about the game? Sure. You can go to Mm calliopegames.com. You can visit our Twitter or our uh, Facebook, and uh, we'll be doing updates about this. This game is is setting sail towards us. It should be arriving to us uh, very end of October is what we're looking at. So, so not yeah. far. Not yeah. far to wait. No, not far to Patience. wait. Patience. Yes, exactly. It's, it's soaring <laughs> towards us right now. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming down. Thank you sure. for showing us the game. Um, and if you are interested in this game, please talk to your friendly local game store, and we will see you at your friendly local game store.